We try so hard to understand how a person could do something like this to two, child, to two children. I guess it's hard to see into his mind because I couldn't understand how you could do that. I couldn't go hunting and kill a yeah. deer, but he could go out and kill two little girls. So... And you did everything you could to support us, but most importantly, you surrounded the family of these two little girls. Gosh, I'll never forget it. I recently watched a movie called The Shack. When they get this guy, what do you want? What do you want to happen to this point? Well, have you seen The Shack? I have not, but I, my my father read the book, and I, <laughs> I I've heard parts of it, but not enough to know like what about? Tell me, tell me how it relates. So the little girl is taken from her family, and she is raped and murdered. And in a way, I've always seen myself as the father because he drifts away from God back and forth, which he, I do too in some ways. But then he, they don't find the girl, and then he dies and goes to heaven. And um, while he's there, God t like shows him how to forgive. And I hope, not that I, I could ever forgive what he did, but I hope that he finds forgiveness in that way, but I still really, really hope he gets hurt in prison many times. But that wouldn't be good on my part either. Like You're human at the same time. Yeah, so like you try to forgive him, but you can't. All right, let me ask you about the shack. Okay. The shack is the house inside you that other people help you build. I've heard you say that. Yeah. Can you expand on that? So, I mean, you can read the story as just a story, but I wrote it with layers for my kids. And, and they know that I'm both Mackenzie and Missy. You know, Mackenzie mm -hmm. Allen Phillips and Missy um, Ann Phillips, both spell map for on purpose. Um, a writer from Nashville said, you know, my sense is that Missy represents something murdered in you as a child, probably your innocence, and Mackenzie is you as the adult trying to deal with it. And, and I showed it to Kim. She said, boy, she nailed it. Wow. And the house on the inside is, is represented by the place we get stuck, shack. But it's also our own soul. That's our heart. And... When it's broken, and I'm thrilled when I hear stories of people who grew up inside affirmation and encouragement and the wonder of affection and all of that. And a lot of us, we didn't get that. We did not get good help. And it's not because somebody was trying to hurt us. They did the best they, can, they did with what they had. But that's the place we then store our addictions and hide all of our secrets and is the place of shame and disgust. I mean, we don't want anybody to ever come in that place because we're terrified. We will see a look on their face that is the same disgust that we see in the mirror. And that's where we store our secrets. So we're not telling any, we, we become performers, ways to cover up and hide. We create a facade 100 yards out from the shack that we can paint as fast as we can pick up people's expectations. And we learn to live from the outside in because we got nothing on the inside that is worthy of living out from. And the beauty of what God does is that he's going to communicate to you at some point in this journey, I've always loved the shack. I've always loved you. Not your facade. I'm not into the uh. facade. Right? You can put all your effort in that. I'll be right here. But I want you to know that I'm not just love the shack, that's where I live. And that's the beauty of a God who comes from inside out in terms of that metaphor, uh, the house on the inside. And that's his intention, is to heal us so that we become whole people. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the day I can look in his eyes and tell him how much I don't like him. I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah, I'll stand with you. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, at the conference in which the new sketch was released, there was a specific wording and talk that seemed aimed at someone in particular. Can you verify if it was actually meant for someone, obviously the suspect, but beyond that, like a particular person? Would Those were comments made by me, and uh, no, I'm not going to talk about it.
I'm assuming they were coming to me, but maybe that's what you're referencing. It was, yeah, I think it was the they way you word things. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, another thing, I don't know if you can talk about it now, but there's the shack was used in it. Was mm -hmm. that on purpose? It was. Okay. Have you seen the shack? I have. I watched yeah. it twice. You know, you know what I mean then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think one of the big rumors going on around, I guess, is that they were di they died in a shack or like there there has to be some other meaning other than faith to it, which is something that we're trying to um, kind of get rid of, kind of get rid of that rumor. There was no shack involved. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. um, but that had a really, really, that field had a really compelling uh, effect on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. that movie in general, I the first time I watched it and it had like zero effect on me. I just, I just kind of sat through it and didn't mm -hmm. think about the meaning behind it just because I, I just wanted to watch it as a movie. And then the second time I went back and watched it and I cried the entire movie. And the third time I went back and watched it, I cried even more. And so then I read the book so that I could kind of dive deeper into it. And it actually helped me a lot um, with forgiveness and myself and being stronger going through it all and being able to help other people. So it's a really good movie. It's so cool to hear you say that. <laughs> I had to say it had the same effect on me mm -hmm. in a different way because I'm not, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't understand mm -hmm. what it's like to lose a sister. But that movie had such a profound effect on everything about our life that it was worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. it, were, it was worth mentioning and I'm, if it had no other effect on anybody but you I'm glad I did yeah and and it didn't even like then I was like holy cow he watched that movie and it like it affected him in a really good way but I remember watching it and like watching the dad the first time and like seeing how he was feeling and I'm like oh that's how my grandparents are feeling right now yeah. and then watching it again and watching the siblings kind of go through what they were going through and like man that's what I'm what's what I'm struggling yeah. with right now and your grandparents are strong people oh my gosh yeah Oh my gosh. I don't think I could be the strong person that I am without them. So. How nice is that to say? Yeah. So. Yeah. And it, I feel like, it's, like life just keeps throwing stuff at us and we still make it through. And that's just really amazing to me. Like most families, like like in forensics right now, we're learning that like the statistics behind everything. And yeah. like most of the time, families don't stay together at the end of this. That's right. And so being together three years after is really, really good. Mm. And like, like it's not even in the statistics. So that doesn't happen very often. It's inspirational. It does not. Yeah. Exactly. And you guys just take it. I mean, it just, gosh, it comes to you. And just, best way if your troubles are right up the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see you guys doing all the time. We we definitely hold each other together. As soon as we have a thought like we don't want to be here anymore, we don't want to go through this anymore, we just mm -hmm. keep pushing through it, and we push through it together. And I think that's what helps us a lot. And other families, if you don't see that, and then like if you, you just just do it this way, but right. you can't like force that on them. Sometimes right. you're just like you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. So 